But the poem I want to read first, with Guthrie in them, is a poem I wrote in, in, in response to the governor kicking me out of the poet law. He couldn't really do that, you know. So what he had to do was get rid of the poet laureate position in New Jersey. Now we are like officially ignorant. We have no poet laureate position in New Jersey. Of all the states. And they say that, see that black dude did that. It's a Carl Train tune called Lonnie's of the Men. And this is a poem called Fashion This. Fashion This from the irony of the world. Yeah, fashion this from the irony of the world. That I, the undaunted laureate of the place, daunted in some unagetted pretense of what they see, they be as if such where they was, was yet to be. And then to say they is and it's not like revelations, wow, humans. The skin, the lodging inside dumbness, a slight breeze from their speech to speak as if acquainted with small things in the world, eating, belching, farting, murder, robbery, and so as if, and then to they is. But nothing further, but the wee dots on the deletion resembling the minds of them yet to come. Hey, imagine you were me, or imagine you were thee, and we knew all the things both do and is and will ourselves to be. Imagine you were in this place, and they wanted to run everywhere, pointless, endless, understanding not even why they smell or their hair fall out what to do about gout. That they're yet stupid to colds and cancer and death. They think holy and ultimate. When death, death is simply a report card of the ignorant. Nothing dies but that which never lived. And they might return in a white suit and in charge of ugly small mistakes. Somebody at Harvard could win a billion dollars in a post if they could, but they never will because it's the reason they committed suicide. Suppose you had to live with ignorant white people and Negroes in cages with important chains around their mouths. Suppose you had heard of Trent Lott and suppose you woke up 1 a.m. and there was a vampire on the tube being interviewed by a Nigelino boob, a handsome rat for whom the idea of brain was only an idea which he did not think if he could was a bad one. And the boob was a killer, yet to graduate from killer school. So he worshiped the vampire's teeth. The two juicy fangs hanging from each end of his lip, the Negro thought was him. And dreamed of having teeth like that so he could be a rat. He was tired of being a mere heel. And the vampire was planning to bite the whole world suck the blood out of everything, to suck the blood out of the world and make its future a vampire. That could whirl through space, suck the blood out of the stars, and suck the blood out of the planets, and suck the blood out of the moon, and suck the blood out of the sun, and then armed and blubbery fat with everything's blood. Still hot, musical like emptiness. He could lift into the outer way gonosphere and search for God if there was such, and suck the blood out of him, her, it, them, whatever. Tell there was no blood anywhere, and they needed you, blood. In fact, you'd be one of the first to go. It was a special issue of Jungle Comics, where the vampire the thin-nosed kind from out back, who can suck with his teeth and stir with his nose, whose eyes are missing. And what you see is the bottom of a coal mine filled with 2,000 fathoms of lynch, execution, missing, raped, cheated, framed, slandered, stolen, frowned, frozen ex-corpuscles. 
hid under the glistening, listening underwater ass craft. The satanic moron co. Whose breath is toxic and pokes holes in the sky so dead things can shit on our food. He is called Fangul the asshole. And dances to dry lips set on fire by missing junkies he has eaten. He is the devil's newspaper and wears his ass backwards so the colon can wear a uniform. And revelations can be burned, especially chapter 18, verse 12, where it say, beware of ugly motherfuckers, who is not really ugly motherfuckers, but uglier, much, much more uglier than that. So speak that. Amen. I speak with the rage of angels, them that be with marks. I speak with the clarity and inferno of the necessary, like my man John on Patmos, watching sky vision and digging it was all commercials. I speak like Ali Baba, the Arabian Pope, who when he spoke the magic words opened the supper up and the mountains swang. In vision one day, there would be a John named Train who would blow the same shit. I blow with the deep fear of John on the island, looking at the actual devil. I am like him, and then I try to count to Mammy Gemma's heads and horns and find out what will kill him. I speak like him who spoke to Philadelphia and hung out with Jesus before they murdered him. I speak like him who dug that Peter was a coward and kicked the Lord up. And that Paul was an anti-Semite who never came out of the closet. I speak as one who knew Judas would drop a dime on the movement and confirmed that Chuck had hung his lousy self just before I got busted. I speak as one betrayed by the lies of those who say they are religious but are greed ridden worshippers of Satan who kill anyone who opposes them and calls it a church of defense against evil. Like John, I would speak. Like John who baptized. Like John the knower. Like John the blower. Like John the brown. Like John the revelator. I speak like James the brother. James the other, Jim the hip, like Dick the rude, like Bird the high, like Monk the deep. I speak from the island of my soul and cast a terrified look into the sky filled with monsters, with witches and devils, with great whores and beasts and things with heads and horns and blood dripping out of their eyes. out. Imagine you were here in this place, staring into the soul of something filthy, trying to keep it from murdering you, to keep your eyes from registering, your ears from hearing, your mouth from reporting, and you could feel it breathing on your neck. And saw sometimes the shadow of its horny hands reaching out of the dark. And you can see the shadow of its gun, its lie, its teeth sweating. Imagine you could actually understand its obscene ideas. And they made you enter the mind of Fred Douglas and stare out at the ocean, just as John at the edge of Africa, staring at the overhead commercials for the death of the beast. So the blessing that is in my name and in my words, I give to myself. And you who are truthful as the actual life of the world. And it is this blessing which will save us, will make us strong as we go on with our work of scientifically determining how to kill the beast. Each night I fill my notebooks with formula and instructions to myself and others of what to do, what to study, and where to go, who to talk to and when. I make lists of words and names and events and processes, necessary stages of what we have come to realize is protracted, and what we do, we will do, and
what we succeed at is worth the pain. What we fail at is worth the understanding if we can understand what the next step is. We are studying with all our minds and hearts. Our soul's determination to understand how to slay the beast, how to slay the serpent. This task Nat handed down to whoever did understand it, this is what he did, hanging on that tree, slain by the serpent's host. How to slay the serpent. So we have learned that we cannot die except by our own submission to it. And have decided we will not die except when we understand what place we go to. And so begin to set that wear in order and begin to understand where the beast will be hiding there. We are the rider of the black horse. Black horse, black rider. Who conquers with a scale, with justice and measure. The mighty pentatonic mode of the finite music of infinity, a new joint. And when I return from this forwarding of my feeling and knowing, the beast sat still, and his teeth wiggled with lies, and at once, at once I remembered where before I'd seen him, before his tenure as the found a counterfeit ghost in the Caucasian crib. Guess it was the same one. Remember the little devil that Gerald 2X arrested and placed in the pages of Muhammad Speaks? And we saw him where Malcolm had locked him up with the little horns out of his head little evil eyes and the twin fang straws, the twin fang straws for sucking oil and blood. It got clear to me as he rose to leave. And then grow boob slobbered happiness at being recognized in the newest commode in a Caucasian abode. The vampire turned to where before the cunning little tail that used to dangle out its hiding struck me at its absence. Oh, I thought. And at that moment, I saw the thing dart, like a copperhead's fart, out of the Negro's curled lips, ring with the white chalk, honorary Caucasian chalk circle of merit, which identifies wooden Negroes promised to the honorary genus of homo locus subsidiary, literally mere man, who no longer kneel when they're made well-paid heels, but now can assume the funky bed bug crouch the hideously self-hating. At the same time, they're given a great facsimile, carte blanche, weapon of ugliness to use against inwards. And any who would violate the sanctity of northern appetite. And so I came to understand that the beast deadly arrow shot out from the first horseman's white bow from the white horse, the weapon which Revelations prophesied to John was the weapon of his transitory rule, was now the tongue of the boo, the tongue of the boo, whom I air and calling him that, or rat, or heel, or dog, or traitor, that tail become a tongue, was the sign that from the vampire's tail was bestowed on the wooden negro badge that allowed him to enter clan meetings and skinhead lynchings and Texas executions and Palestinian ethnic cleansings and report with a slobber of interrogation white ring serpent's beak symbol font and punctuation on the tabula rasa of the media sheet the empty echo of his eviscerated self and in the soul's place that beast tail was hung. In the soul's place, that beast tail was hung. That beast tail was sung. And I stood remembering Patmos and the images that sailed across the air when you and I was there and wondered what next the world of this life held for those who would love goodness. Place, that beast tail was hung, that beast tail was sung, and I stood remembering Patmos, and the images sailed across the air when you and I was there, and wondered what next the world that this life held, hell for those who would love goodness, for those who would love
Ramsey. Ramsey, I don't know these other gentlemen's names, but they can play.